Hello, I'm Lynn Fraser. The question today is, are you happy? Are you leading a fulfilled, happy life? Are you satisfied with your life? Happiness is an interesting question and a lot of researchers are really looking into it now. One thing that they've found is that we actually need to do some positive things to increase our happiness. The brain isn't really set up to notice happiness. It's kind of noticing things that might be dangerous. That's how we've survived these millions of years. What contributes to happiness? What are the obstacles to happiness? Most of us can look around and go, well, I think part of the obstacle for me is my job. I work 60 hours a week. I don't have time to you know, spend with my family. I don't have time to exercise. I don't have time to socialize and be with friends in the way I'd like to be. My job, that's a big problem and I don't feel like I can cut back because I'm afraid I might lose it. Or maybe that's you know one of the main places in my life where I really get a lot of satisfaction. I like to stay there, but you know, it's a bit too much. The pressure is too much. For anyone who has children, especially small children, fatigue is a big issue. That causes a lot of stress on us. The unrelenting demands of having family and trying to balance all of what needs to be balanced, that can be a big issue for us too. Maybe we've had a kind of a tough childhood and when we grew up, we had some fear. Maybe we were bullied. Maybe we had some kind of a situation that wasn't really optimal for our development. And as we've moved into adult life, some of those things have come with us. There are some simple practices that everybody has time for that can really help. You know, for me, I had a, an experience of lots of tension in my body. My shoulders were chronically kind of tight. I started to do yoga, I started to meditate, and in particular, I learned to breathe. And my body started to relax. I started to have more peace. A lot of people that I know have a lot of anxiety. Sometimes I'll refer to the part of the mind that, that just generates thoughts as the thought stream. We could have a thought stream that's kind of quiet and calm. We can have one that's really compulsive. Every one of us has experienced times when there's something that's really bothering us and we just go back to it and back to it and back to it. And over time, it can create this habit or this groove in the mind where we just kind of feel like we don't have any control over that. There are lots of ways to work with the mind, lots of ways to work with the thought stream. And in particular, lots of ways to work with healing our nervous system so that we can support our bodies and our minds and our energy through our life and have a happier life just because we have a better vehicle for it. Time is a big issue for most of us in our culture. It's hard to balance the demands for other people and demands for income and for the kind of basic necessities of life that we have with the, with the time that we need to be ourselves and socialize with people that we feel safe with. And all of those things that we might know intuitively will help us to be happier and yet it, it sometimes feels hard to tune into that or to give it enough time. There are some obstacles to happiness. Definitely there are, you know, any kind of um, stress or trauma can, can be an impediment to happiness. When we start to work with some of the obstacles, we'll find that as we heal, there's a natural opening. That's certainly what I found in my experience, and a lot of the people that I work with have had the same experience. There's a settling in the nervous system that happens. As we start to feel calmer and more relaxed, space opens up, and we're just naturally more happy. We experience more fulfillment. There's more room in our lives to, to really go for what we value and to put our time and energy and attention into what we value. One of the really interesting things the researchers have found is that it takes about 30 seconds of our full attention before the brain even registers that we're feeling happy or satisfied. So, you know, if we're doing that in five or six second increments or we're hardly noticing at all because there's so much else going on, maybe the mind is kind of compulsive at the moment, there could be something and big that's going on right now, like you know, maybe a loss of a job or a loss of a, a loved one. Those kinds of things can really get on our mind and really influence us and impact our quality of life for sometimes long periods of time. When we're dealing with trauma treatment, one of the key sentences to remember is that safety is the treatment. So how can we feel safer? How can we establish the kind of atmosphere 
internally, where we're not judging ourselves, where we have kindness and compassion for ourselves. And that's a big one to give up. So many of us have those ideas of, I'll be happy when this happens. Or if only this would happen, if only that person would leave me alone at work. Or if only, you know, the kids are a bit older and I was getting more sleep. Or, you know, there's so many external circumstances that have such an effect on us. Very naturally, they have an effect on everybody. And how can we work with that more skillfully? One of the things that made me so excited when I first learned about meditation was the breath. And I just noticed when I could pay attention to my breath and even just to remember. At one point, I was in kind of a tough situation at work and my meditation teacher's voice just kind of came into my head and said, breathe. I realized I've been holding my breath and I just kind of took a deep breath in, took a deep breath out. And in that just couple of seconds, it popped into my mind what I could do. And I said what I needed to say and everything worked out a lot better. So there, there are these little nuances of things that we can work with. And in addition to that, there are some very basic grounding practices that we can do. Most people could really improve the quality of their breath. Diaphragmatic breathing using the diaphragm muscle, which is not up in the top of the chest, it's lower down towards the lower rib cage. Even breath, exhalation and inhalation about the same length. Lots of times when we're stressed, we have this, and then we hold the breath and we don't let it out. Or maybe we're depressed and it's like, and then it's like, we can't even face taking another in breath. So whether you're on the stress side or the depression side, breathing is very, very helpful. This is something we can do when we're, you know, driving in the car, when we're going for a walk, when we're, you know, talking to the kids. It doesn't matter kind of what we're doing through the day. If we have a, a practice of it where we learn how to breathe properly and we, we practice it, then it's more likely that it'll occur to us, number one, when we're, when we're in a kind of a situation where it would be helpful. And also we can do a mindfulness practice around it where we can just notice what's going on with my breath right now. Hmm, this is a bit shallow. Maybe I could take a couple of deep breaths here. Another really interesting thing in the research is that it takes six seconds of exhaling before the relaxation response has a chance to kick in. It's part of the polyvagal system, the vagus nerve controls the, the breathing and the relaxation response. So we all have a sympathetic nervous system, the energy, the active energy in our body. We have a parasympathetic nervous system, which is the relaxation response. So just right now with me, let's just take an inhale and then exhale for six seconds. Maybe count it in your mind. Relax your shoulders, relax your stomach. Then take another deep inhale. Exhale, counting to at least six. Let your whole body relax. Again, do this at your own pace. If six seconds feels like a bit too much, just do a little bit less and gradually work your way up to six. Two more deep breaths, inhale, relax your body as you exhale. Now that took less than a minute. I feel different, I feel more relaxed. So if you're interested in learning more about this, I'd love it if you were to sign up on my website. I send out free videos every week. You can check out my YouTube channel. I have almost 100 practices on my YouTube channel. One thing we can work with that has a dramatic difference on us and in in the quality of our lives is our relaxation in the body. As we learn to do these Shavasana practices, they're called in yoga, it's where you lay down on your back and you have your arms out, legs a little bit apart, and you really just go through the whole body from head to toe. Most of us carry a lot of tension in our bodies, most of it unconscious, we don't even know it's there. And when we tune in, start to let that relax, everything opens. It's hard, you know, if you think about how you could get a, any blood flow, if your fist is clenched and your arm is tight, nothing can flow through there. Everything's tight, the muscles aren't meant to be tight all the time, they're meant to flex and release, flex and release, right? 
learning to relax in the body is not maybe as simple as it sounds. Shavasana, the, the corpse pose actually, when we're lying on our back relaxing, is considered the hardest pose. Even though we're not actually doing anything with our muscles, there's nothing activated, that's the, the key. Most of us are so used to having unnecessary activation in the body that it takes us a while to learn how to actually release that and let it go. So right now, even, just pay attention to your forehead. Eyebrows, you can lift them up a couple of times and let all the muscles of your forehead relax. Relax your jaw, make sure there's enough space between the upper jaw and the lower jaw that you're not clenching your teeth. And then tune into the muscles in the back of the neck. Notice those. Let your whole shoulders relax, all the way down through your arms, through all those large muscles of the back. And relax the chest and the stomach. Notice where you're breathing. Allow your body to relax so that the breath can move freely. The body knows how to breathe properly. It's just our habits of tension that get in the way. And that's something that we can work with. It actually doesn't even take that long. Relax your whole body from head to toes. I'm starting a new course coming up soon in early April, April 10th, on happiness and joy. In the course, we're going to cover some of the obstacles. We've talked about a few of them here. Learning to use the breath, learning to relax the body, those are very helpful. There are some other habits of the mind that we'll work directly with the thought stream, working with compulsion in the mind, really learning how to release the stress that might be building up through the day. We'll also look at some practices that help to increase our happiness. How can we tune in, build that into our daily lives where we tune into the happiness that's already here? You know, when someone comes into the room that you're happy to see, take 30 seconds. That's what it takes. The brain needs 30 seconds in order to start creating those new pathways in the brain for happiness. So take 30 seconds. Really notice the person, the visual, if you're touching them, notice the touch, the smell, really let all of your senses be engaged in that practice. Or maybe it's that you walk outside into the sunshine. Maybe there's birds. Maybe the sun feels warm on your face. Maybe you could allow yourself to breathe for a few minutes and just relax, let go of the thoughts in the mind. Some of these practices are very simple, very easy to integrate into our daily lives. Others are a little bit more complex and we'll have lots of time to work with those too. So if you're interested, sign on to my website. It's one of them, nondualinquiry.com or stillpointyoga.ca, because I'm Canadian. And let me know what you think. Give me an email, go onto YouTube, check out some of my videos. And if you're interested in the course, let me know, I'd love to talk to you about it. We can sign online, we can talk on the phone, I can answer your questions, and we'll see if it's a good fit for you. I hope to hear from you. Thanks.